Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Griffin, better known as, as the Fanatical Futurist. I'm the founder and CEO of the 311 Institute, the World Futures Forum, and Ex Potential University. And it's my honor and privilege to be joining you all in a couple of weeks' time at the Go Beyond Aviva event in Orlando. That's it, where I'll be swapping my virtual studio for the real stage. That's it. So that'll be a novelty in itself after everything that we've gone through. Now, during my presentation, I'm going to be having conversations with you all about the future of all the different sectors that you're interested in. Now, one of these is obviously the manufacturing industry, and there are a lot of trends impacting the manufacturing industry, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser right here, right now, as to some of the things that you can actually expect me to talk about. Now, on the one hand, we have Industry 4. You all know Industry 4. You're probably looking at me right now, if you could, thinking, I don't need to hear anything else about Industry 4 because I am the expert. However, um, did you know that Google, under the Google Brain Project, has joined together lots and lots of different factory robots? They've attached them to the cloud, say attached them, connected them, really, to the cloud, and artificial intelligence, and it let Google do this. It allowed them to turn those robots into a single entity with a hive mind that from a factory setting perspective means that I can now teach one robot one thing and it teaches the rest of the fleet. No more reprogramming of robots needed whatsoever. Now this itself plays into a variety of diff different trends, including the hive mind economy, which is a conversation for a different time. But increasingly, these robots, these artificial intelligences that are embedded within these robots are self-evolving. So we actually have the evolution of general purpose robots that are able not only to evolve their own code, but they're able to learn by themselves. They are able to self-organize and they're able to self-optimize, including things like cobots, for example. They can figure out the best arc that they need to use when they are making whatever it is that they're making. Maybe cookies, I don't know. Maybe a car, who knows? Um, however, you know, now when we have a look at this, this tips the global research and development industry on its head. Globally, we spend about $1.7 trillion a year on research and development. However, consider this, and we have some very basic working prototypes of this that I will walk through when I'm on the actual stage. Now, if you have a connected device that is, has sensors embedded within it, or could be a car, and it is then connected to a network via, for example, 5G, as that vehicle travels around a city or travels around a particular landscape, information is streaming off of that car like crazy. However, as that car is driving around, we understand how it's being used. We understand what's impacting its reliability. For example, maybe it keeps going down potholes. So we can feed that information back to a creative machine. It's an artificial intelligence that is able to redesign the product on the fly in simulation billions of times faster than humans can. So for example, that creative machine designs a new set of shock absorbers. It pushes those shock absorbers to an, into an intelligent factory digital twin. That factory digital twin, like some of the ones that we see from Siemens, tries to optimize the configuration of that spring or that uh, shock absorber and then figure out the best way to manufacture it in that factory. Once it's done that, it pushes those processes, those schematics and everything else basically to the factory floor and off it goes. It goes off and, for example, 3D prints the new shock absorber. So this is where we push to production. Now, this accelerates innovation like crazy. This is increasingly also going to be the way that the vast majority of manufacturing organizations across all of the different areas that they're interested in are going to make products. When we look at customization and personalization, 85% of people want customized and personalized products. 75% of those people are likely to recommend those manufacturers, those brands to their friends, and then retention is 75%. It is a crazy thing. Now, when we start having a look at more agile and adaptable robots, when we have a look at factories that can self-optimize for big jobs, small jobs, whatever it happens to be, increasingly, 
Customization and personalization is becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper for manufacturers to do, which then feeds into B2B, B2C, but also the significantly upticking direct to consumer trend. So what have you bought recently that's personalized? Years ago, that would have been very difficult and very expensive for these factories to do, depending on what it was. We have additive manufacturing. So additive manufacturing needs to be bought much more basically into the factory scale. Now, this is where we have 3D and 4D printing. We have holographic printing. Now, if you're wondering what holographic printing is, holographic printing is where we use a photosensitive resin to, and a laser to 3D print things like these Adidas sneakers. Now, in Adidas's case, they want to 3D print tens of millions of sneakers in the back of stores as well as on continental USA. Now, what that means is that from a supply chain perspective, they can almost eliminate their entire global supply chain because all they now need is a photosensitive resin. Uh, we also have tractor beams. Now, I'm including this one because I'm a futurist. However, when we have a look at Foxconn, increasingly we can use ultrasonic tractor beams to assemble 3D printed components without having to get humans and our little fiddly fingers uh, sort of involved. So tractor beams are actually now st starting to make it into the manufacturing industry big time. Who did who knew? And then we have dark factories. Now dark factories have been talked around for a long, long time. But increasingly, when we start combining some of these other trends and technologies together, they become increasingly plausible, let alone basically for standardized products. And when we start talking about fully autonomous manufacturing, do any of you use Amazon? Maybe I'll talk about that on the stage. And that's it for me at the moment. So I look forward to seeing you all on the real stage in Orlando. If you have any questions, hold your hands up, shout at me, shout at me appropriately. Otherwise, I'm not going to answer you. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Take care. Goodbye.